John from Droid Dog here, and today we're unboxing the Nook Simple Touch, which is the basically the third Nook out there, the third complete refresh in the design. There have been several different versions between 3G and Wi-Fi of the uh, at least the first Nook, uh, and I've had all three so far, including this one. Uh, I'm a bit of a fan of the franchise. Uh, there was a, a point when I was critical of the way Barnes & Noble handled some billing with their Nook Study rental program, but overall I, I love the hardware, I love their store, um, and I like the company overall. So let's see what we've got in here. Uh, I don't know if they're including this with all of them, I haven't seen this actually. While I get this plastic off, you can see a quick comparison with the packaging from the original Nook. Very similar, obviously takes up a lot less space. Um, different than the Nook Color packaging, which basically opened up like this. There was a magnet holding these two uh, separate boxes together and a flap on the back. This one's a little bit dirty because of a recent move, but uh, I'll just show you. Same, uh, same basic package design, two compartments. There's the Nook. In here we have the AC adapter and I'm guessing it's going to be a micro USB to USB. Yep, micro to standard, just like the other Nooks, although this one is black instead of white, as uh, came with the original Nook. Here's a quick start guide. Micro USB port, uh, power button up top, page turning buttons on the sides, and a quick nav button, a home button at the bottom. Quick look at the back of the box there. Uh, six inch touch screen for easy navigation. That's the Pearl e-ink screen, uh, which is supposed to be pretty amazing. Refreshes every, I think, five or six page views. Uh, it's supposed to be very visible in the sun. Entire interface is a touch screen, which uh, sets it apart from some of Kindle's offerings. And of course, the original Nook, which I have right here. Uh, I'm not sure if it's charged up completely. And I've, I've added a book cover and uh, replaced the back panel with an orange one because I am a compulsive customizer. Uh, but I just had to charge this up for a long time just to be able to get it, get it turned on. Hopefully that won't be as much of an issue with the Simple Touch because this one is supposed to last two months on a single charge. That's two months of reading. Um, so I'm holding down the power button here and hopefully we'll have fully charged before first use it says. so. And you can see the Nook is starting up. Now the original Nook, of course, had this split screen. Now both run Android, but the original had this full color panel down at the bottom, which is not very responsive. Um, kind of a cool idea. You can look at colorful uh, book and magazine covers down there, browsing the shop. You have a web browser on the original. The new one does not have a web browser. This one also has no 3G option. There's no separate model that has uh, AT&T 3G. There's also no audio jack. And the original Nook, down by the micro USB charging port, also had an audio jack. You won't find that on the new one. So this is a trimmed down, uh, economical version. So it's a simplified design, but it brings the content front and center. So it says, welcome to your all new Nook, the simple touch reader from Barnes & Noble. Experience everything you love about reading in a new way. Just tap, shop, and get fast Wi-Fi delivery of books, magazines, newspapers, and more. Right to your Nook. Read forever. And there's already uh, over 2 million titles available from Barnes & Noble. You can pre-order books. You can subscribe to periodicals and have them automatically delivered to your device. So I'm just going to go on page 1 of 178 of that user end user agreement. I think I'll just agree to that. I'm in Pacific time. And the display does look great. Um, a lot of contrast. And while I can see my fingerprints, if I'm looking for them and angling the nook in the light, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to let you see this. Um, they're not distracting at all, just reading. And I'm trying to smudge it here. I also I do wash my hands before each of these. Now it's registering my device. And this is a good time to rearrange the camera. I'm going to sign into my Barnes & Noble account. Alright, get started. Discover all the wonderful ways to enjoy reading with your new Nook. And remember, the entire Barnes & Noble bookstore is just a touch away. Had a Nook before? You'll see your entire library, plus your five most recent reads, already downloaded and ready to go. Current issues of magazines or newspapers will be there too. Welcome to Nook. Alright, let's go to the home screen. Alright, takes a second to populate. And now you can see some of my titles down below here. Oh no, those are the Barnes & Noble Top 100. See my library. 
Okay, here we go. So it took me a second to figure this out here. On the, the library, you page up and down. Uh, and you can do that with the buttons on the side as well. And as you can see, contrast is great. Now, none of these titles have been downloaded to this Nook. Let's see, those are samples. Let's see what else I've got here. To Android's Dream of Electric Sheep. Let's download that. And it jumped to the chapter that I left it at on a previous Nook. So that's pretty neat. Now you can see it's not the entire screen is not flickering for each page turn now. It's just fading gradually. And then maybe on this next one it'll flicker again. This one. There we go. So you get, I guess, six pages stored up, ready to be displayed, and then it does the, the refresh, the flicker. But this is very quick. And I'm going to go into one of my books here on the original Nook. So in order to go down through this page, I have to turn on the color display. Go down and select the same book, do Android Stream of Electric Sheep. takes longer than the simple touch and you can see here we're at the the cover page so I'm gonna go ahead and page forward on these at the same time give you an idea of how quick each one refreshes I think I missed the first one on the left side there so it's it looks to be exactly the same Although it is uh, nice not to see that black flickering, the, the total screen refresh. So I'm not noticing a big difference in speed there. But I can say that navigating through the library, this method, just using an entire touchscreen interface, on the original look, this is not a touchscreen, just the color screen down below is. In terms of getting around, I like this method much better. It's much faster. And on this nook, you always have to turn this screen on and off, or you have it set to go to sleep. You have to bring it back up to do navigation through lists and things like that. So already I'm liking this one. In terms of the size, about the same width. It's not as thick, I don't think. No, not as thick. And in terms of height, you've got uh, over an inch, I think, of difference there. Going to wake up the Nook, and this is the drag to unlock screen right there. And once we're in the text, if I tap anywhere on the screen, I get my reading tools. Now you can see I can highlight this word, I can add a note, I can share it, and I can look it up. I was not patient there, I didn't need to hit it twice. So there's a dictionary definition of the word. And here are other reading tools. I can go to the table of contents. I can search. I can jump to a page. Um, I can change the way the text is displayed. Line spacing, the margins, font size. And there is a tick there for uh, publisher defaults, so you can see it the way that the publisher wants you to see it. And if I hit more, I can go into the ratings. I can archive it, I can share it, I can read reviews, and I can check out related titles. People who bought that book also bought this one. I can go to more by this author. And I can page up and down through those items. Up at the top, you can see my current reading. There's the bookmark tab. I go back into more, you can see a little comment up there. It says share reading and recommendations, invite your friends to be Nook friends. And clear that and the notification will go away. My Wi-Fi up there. Battery. Time. And actually those just launch the, uh, the Wi-Fi settings when you tap that area of the screen. Quick look around the device. You've got an SD card slot here. Supports up to 32 gigs. 
that was a little difficult to get open there. Okay, actually there's no one in there. I have to look into that. Check out the text on the screen for an update on that. On the back you just have this rounded power button. This is a rubberized back, curved so that I suppose it makes it easier to hold because your fingers wrap around and you can grip that edge right there. On the bottom all you have is the micro USB port and a charging light. And that's all there is to it. This bezel around here is also a rubberized um, black, maybe bluish black material with a clicky little home button at the bottom. And when I was doing the page turn comparison with the original Nook, I had a hard time. I missed it a couple times, I think, just pushing without holding the other side down. But when it's in your hands, these are very easy to press, but you're not going to do it accidentally. You've got to squeeze the thing. But it's the hardware feels solid. It's a satisfying click. There's nothing to jiggle around there. You just have a little ridge uh, so that you can feel that you're in the right area to do a page turn. And uh, already I can tell you that I'm excited to have this in my hands, so I'm going to be using it for a few days and I'll be back with a review. Thanks for watching. Hey,